so I was in an orange jumpsuit and sent off to jail, McLennan County Jail. And I was isolated in a medical ward um, for my own protection. But I spent several months in jails. Um, I went to a prison in Lexington, Kentucky to get a psych evaluation to make sure I was capable of standing trial. <clears throat> but I spent the better part of the next year in various jail, jails. And then we had a trial. I had a great lawyer. He was a court appointed lawyer and he was agnostic. Um, different. But he didn't have any animosity towards my beliefs and I didn't preach in any of my beliefs on anybody anyway. But he got me a plea deal. I tried to work with the government back in the beginning and I knew all the positions of all the shooters in the building. I could have given them so much. They could have gone in and, you know, disarmed people and, and ended it peacefully, but they wouldn't take my information. They wouldn't make that give me the immunity that I guess I was seeking at the time because I failed a lie detector test because I'm really bad at lying. And although I had no weapon the day of the raid, I did have um, a magazines in a pouch um, underneath my bed. So <clears throat> The question, do you ha did you have any weapons the day of the raid? The answer is no, but your mind's thinking about the magazine, so I failed the lie detector test. But anyway, I still worked with them, but they wouldn't accept that, and I'm just in this jail cell, and by myself, in a room, on a bed, and I turn on the television to see the entire complex on fire. Of course, I, did, I wasn't up at 6 o'clock in the morning when they started gassing the place. By the time I was up and watching television, it was on fire. And I was all alone. And I didn't know if anyone was going to make it out. I didn't know anything other than the fact that I wasn't there, I wasn't with my belief, I wasn't with my kids, I was just by myself. So it was rough, but I did the best I could to get back to my kids. Everybody that had, I mean, I had some guy come to my jail cell door and serve me with my charges. After the fire, I was charged with murder and conspiracy to murder. And I didn't even have a weapon, but okay. But the lawyer that worked with me, we eventually did get an agreement um, to lessen the charge, and I was eventually charged with impeding federal officers with a deadly weapon, which basically amounts to resisting arrest, which basically means since I didn't come out on February 28th, the day of the raid, and get shot and killed, therefore I resisted arrest. So I can agree that I resisted arrest because I am still alive. So I took that plea deal and testified for the prosecution, but told the truth um, to the best of my ability with what I knew, which I didn't know everything. I didn't witness everything. I wasn't there the day of the fire. Um, I did help transpose um, video, uh, audio recordings into written text. Um, the federal agents just tried to make everything sound so negative and I would put names to voices because I knew the names, 
But so many times they would say, that sounds like let's start the fire. And I'm like, that's not what it sounds like to me at all. But everything I wrote down, it, I think they just threw it away because I don't think they wanted to know what it really said. But I did that and I did my testimony and then I got three years in prison and I spent three years as close to my kids as I could. And my mother-in-law brought my youngest son, Brian, to see me as often as she could. And I tried to keep that relationship alive. I think I saw him once a month. And I saw the other kids one time in the three years that I was in prison. But I worked in prison and just served my time to get out. And I got out a little early, like six months early. And restarted my life over in Florida and just worked on getting custody of Brian back and I wanted to make that change gradual for Brian so for the first year that I was out my in-laws still had custody and I would see him on the weekends and then when I we switched over custody we just signed the paper and it switched over and then I would I had custody and they would get him on the weekends so we kept a really good relationship because Mike's parents are as awesome as Mike was. And redeveloping a life and trying to get um, my older three children and getting to see them at least because they were much older and going to high school and stuff. So I didn't want to take them away from that situation. I just wanted to give them as much of their mother as they could have. and give my youngest son a life too. So it was building my life back in Florida. I just didn't have anything left in Texas for me to go to. So my family, my mother and my father, my sister, my in-laws, everything was in Florida. So it just naturally, I gravitated to Florida because it's the easiest where to be so that those that you really want in your life can eventually get back to you.